Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to go through our wiring enough to get started exercise for the Allen Bradley CR30 safety PLC. In this video, we are going to be using our safety trainer, which includes Allen Bradley's Guardmaster CR30 safety PLC and a PowerFlex 525 that does have the safe off torque mode. And when it ships to you, it comes with a default program in it. And let's just go through how it should work when we're done. So right now I can press the green button on the driver. Well, first I have a green light over here, which means that we're good to go. And we press the green button and the drive starts. We press the red button and the drive stops. Now if we press the green button again and we hit either one of our e-stops, then the motor stops and we get a red flashing light to tell us that something is wrong in our safety circuit. So now we pull our e-stop out, our red light goes out and our blue light comes on telling us that while our safety circuit is all good now, we still need to reset it. And we do that with the blue light. And that's gonna get us back to our green light and we're ready to go again. Now the goal of this lesson series is not to show you how to design safety circuits. We may dabble in it just a little bit, but really for you to design safety circuits, you need to be a certified functional safety engineer. Our goal here is to understand them enough that we can troubleshoot them when they don't work. I'm not a certified functional safety engineer, so I'm consulting with one of my competent competitors, Jeff Kuiper of Full Circle Automation, who is a TUV Rhineland certified functional safety engineer. And I'll put a link to his website in the description if you need the services of a functional safety engineer. So I'm gonna strip this trainer down where I can start exactly where you are now. Okay, so here's how your trainer will arrive. You notice the PLC is on the back of it. Now, just a second ago, I did have it here on the front. And for this video, I'm gonna relocate it back here mainly so that we can talk about things without having to flip it back and forth. But honestly, in general for the wiring exercises it doesn't work well up here it's actually really a pain so don't relocate yours up here like i said i'm just going to do it to make it a little easier to talk to you in this video so here are the wiring diagrams that we're going to use and also i'll have a link to them in the description so first i'm just going to hit some of the basics so we see one side of buttons one through four go to the plus 24 so let's go ahead and knock that out Okay, so we have jumpers going from all of our normally opens, and we're just gonna run this one behind here, and we're gonna connect it to the left set of terminals, which is our plus 24 volt. And next on our diagram, we see that all of one side of our lights are also jumpered to the minus 24. Okay, so I have wires from one side of all four lights, and I'm gonna run that to the right set of terminals, which is our zero volt. Okay, so next let's go ahead and put power on our PLC. So we're gonna connect a wire to the bottom left terminal, which is our 24 volt, and the second terminal, which is the zero volt. And that left hand one will go to our left set of terminals over here. And our right hand one will go to the right set of terminals. Okay, next let's go ahead and wire our e-stops, which are switch three and switch four. So we see that terminal 12 on our PLC is going to go to the top of one of each contact. So I'm gonna take a wire from the right switch four contact, and we're gonna jump for it to the right switch three contact along with another wire. And that is gonna go to terminal 12 on the bottom of the PLC. Then I'm gonna take a wire from switch four's left contact and I'm gonna connect it with, along with another wire to the left terminal on switch three's contact. And we'll connect it to terminal 13 on the bottom of the PLC. So looking at the other side of these contacts, we see that switch three, we'll say the left contact is gonna to go to terminal zero on the top of the PLC. The right contact will go to terminal one. Then on switch four, the left contact will go to terminal two and the right will go to terminal three. 
So I'm going to connect a wire to the left switch three contact and we're going to connect it to terminal zero on the PLC. And we'll take a wire from the right switch three contact and we'll connect it to terminal one. And we'll take a wire from the left switch four contact And we're going to connect it to terminal two. And then from the right switch four contact. And we'll connect it to terminal three. Okay, the next one on our list is our system reset, which is button four. And we're going to get, we already have a wire at the top of it that we put to our left 24 volt terminals. And we're going to go out of the bottom of that normally open contact, which is the green one on the left. And we're going to connect it to terminal number 10 on the top of our PLC. Okay, now we're going to connect our two safety relays here. And we're going to start by connecting their common wires, which are A2. So we're going to put a wire into A2, which is the bottom left terminal of both of them. And we're going to connect these to the zero volt, which is our right set of terminals here. So anywhere on that right set. And then I'm going to connect a wire to A1 of our left safety relay. And we're going to connect it to 14 on the bottom of the PLC. Then we're going to take a wire from A1 of the right safety relay, and we're gonna connect it to 15 on the bottom of our PLC. Now, next we have terminals 16 and 17. When I actually go to the drive, so instead of flipping back and forth, I'm gonna wait and finish wiring everything over here, and I'm just gonna move my PLC over so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So next we have the monitoring on our two safety relays. So we're gonna connect a wire from the plus 24 volt, which is our left set of terminals, to the common on our left safety relay, terminal number 11. And then we're gonna connect a wire from terminal number 12, which is a normally closed contact on our left, to terminal number 12 on our right safety relay, which is its normally closed contact. Then we're going to connect a wire from terminal number 11 on the right relay. And it's going to go to input zero on our plug-in module. We haven't talked about it yet, but your safety relay came with two modules in the top of it. One is an Ethernet adapter so we can go online over Ethernet. And the other is some auxiliary inputs and outputs. So we'll connect that wire to input zero or I-00. Now, before we get too crowded on the plug-in module, let's go ahead and connect all of our commons on it. You have two commons, which is A3 and B3. And you also have the minus 24 DC, which is A4. So we need to connect all of those wires to the zero volt of our power supply. So I'm going to connect a wire to the bottom set of terminals here, the third one over. That's A3 common. And I'm going to connect a wire to the minus 24 DC, which is A4, or the fourth one over on the bottom row. And then I'm going to connect a wire to B3, which is the top row, third one over. And then we're going to take those three wires that I just connected, and each one of these goes to the zero volt, or that right set of power supply terminals over here. And then we're going to connect a wire to B4, which is the plus 24 volt, and we'll connect it to the plus 24 of our power supply over here, which is the left set of terminals. Okay, the next one is input zero, which also goes over to our drive. So I'm going to hold off on it. And next we have input two on our plug-in module, which goes up to button number two 
right here, the normally open set of contacts. So I'm going to take a wire from input 2, or I-02, and we're going to go to the bottom of our normally open contact, a button number 2. Okay, so next we have our lights here. So output zero goes to our green light, output one goes to our yellow light, output two goes to our red light, and output three goes to our blue light. So I'm just gonna start by connecting wires to each of the outputs on our plug-in module. And then output zero goes to our green light, which is light number one. Then output number one goes to our yellow light, which is light two, and output number two goes to our red light, which is light number three, and output number three goes to our blue light, which is light number four. Okay, so that covers everything but our drive for this wiring exercise. Now you don't need to do this next step. I'm mainly doing it just to make it clear in the video what I'm doing is I'm now going to remove my PLC and I am going to spin my trainer around and snap it over here on the front side so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so we'll pop our front cover off and this exposes our control terminals. And on the bottom row, you're going to see three red terminals and they're going to have a jumper in them. We're going to remove this jumper right here. And there's nothing exactly special about this jumper, but you can set it aside. That way on exercises where we're not using it, you can just pop it back in. If you misplace it, you can jump our three wires. It does the same thing. But now we're going to connect a wire to the S1 and the S2 there, where we just removed the jumper. We're not actually going to connect to the S plus wire. So now I'm going to take the wire that I connected to S1 and we're going to connect it to terminal number 16 on our PLC. Then we're going to take the wire that we connected to S2 and connect it to terminal number 17 on our PLC. So now we're going to take a wire from terminal number 8 on our drive. And this one, actually, I should have connected before because I told you I wouldn't spin this, but I do have to spin it. This needs to go to the minus of our power supply. So let me just spin this. So that wire going to terminal number eight needs to go to the right set of terminal blocks for our power supply. I did my best not to make it where we had to flip it back and forth to keep the confusion down. But um, now we need a wire from R1 of our drive, and it needs to go to the plus of our power supply. So yes, I am gonna still have to flip this back around. And it goes to the left set of power supply terminals, which is our plus 24 volt. And then we're gonna connect a wire to R2, and it's gonna to connect to input one on our plug-in module here. So that is the top row, the second one. I just caught that I made a mistake and I didn't wire it right to the diagram. I don't know where I got terminal eight from. I put a wire from the zero volt of the power supply to terminal eight. That terminal eight is not right. It's supposed to be over here on terminal four. The diagrams clearly show that, but I just hooked up a wire to the wrong place. All right, so yeah, that was a whole lot of wires and probably your head spinning about exactly what the world did I just do. Well, our goal of this video is just to get it functional and kind of put our hands on some wires so that in future videos we can see, okay, yeah, these wires do this and that's why they're wired here. That's why they're wired this way. But yeah, let's go ahead and snap the cover back on the front of our drive and let's power it up and see what happens. So, okay, so we power up and it's looking promising. We have light number four, which is our blue light. It's flashing, hopefully. And we need to change one thing though in our drive. And we're gonna talk more about why we're changing this later. But what we need to do is we need to hit the select button and then chances are yours is coming up with P and it's flashing. We wanna hit up and go to T and then 105. And right now it's set to zero. We want to set that 
to one. And what that's going to do is by default, this drive faults when those safety inputs are dropped out. Well, we don't actually want to fault them when it does. We just want it not to run. So change that to one, and then you can just hit the stop button to clear that fault out. And we'll go ahead and escape back to where it shows hertz, but mainly now we should, if we were good, but we're not, don't worry, don't freak out when it doesn't work. We should be able to hit the green button and it start, and it didn't. And that's because our blue light is flashing and that indicates that our safety circuit is good, but we need to go hit the reset button before it'll resume. So we're gonna hit the blue button now and the blue light goes out, the green light comes on, signifying that we are ready to roll. So I'm gonna hit the green button now. We hear our drive start. Obviously we can hit the red button on the drive. It stops. Now let's test the rest of it. So I should be able to hit the green button and I should be able to hit switch number three. And sure enough, our motor stops and we have a red flashing light indicating that one of our safety devices is tripped. So now we'll pull that back out. The red light goes out, blue light comes back on, but we still can't start because we need to reset our system. Or reset, start our drive again. Now let's hit the switch four and same thing happens. Motor stops, red light starts flashing, indicating something's wrong. We clear it, it won't start again because we need to hit this button. So if yours doesn't function like this, just verify your wiring against the diagram. And in upcoming videos, we're gonna start digging into exactly how this works and probably more importantly, how do we figure out why it's not working? In other words, okay, yeah, I hit that and I see a red light there, but what if we had 50 e-stops on this thing? How do we figure out, how do we narrow down what's going on? So if this video has been helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.